All right, for those of you on Twitch, stand by for just a second. Got to make certain that all this technically technical problems that we've had over the last couple days is actually working because unfortunately with the audio problem we had just about a week or two ago, I want to make certain that that is not going to be causing a problem. So let me just see here real quick. Okay, it says we're live. Are we? Okay, that sounds good. All right, audio looks like it's going all right. So for right now, that should do it. This is Weather Overtime. We are live on Twitch TV and on Facebook Live. If you're just joining us for the first time, your opportunity to ask questions about what's going on with the weather. It is not really seeing too much of anything tonight. Uh, we have had some more fires popping up. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit, so stay tuned and we'll talk about all that in just a little bit nice view of one of our feathered friends a carolina wren taken from the picture around the hickson area thank you very much diane ellis our west shore home weather window picture of the day got any pictures out there we'd love to see them and show them send them to us pictures at wdef.com or again drop into the comments section of our social media pages for more on that tomorrow morning a little bit on the frosty side on the greater chattanooga orthodontics bus stop forecast close to freezing so if you're driving the kids to the uh, car rider line scrape the entire windshield clean that whole periscope driving thing is dangerous for everybody involved mid 60s tomorrow beautiful conditions winds out of the south we'll show you why that's important coming up here in just a little bit average conditions for catching a fish According to the information on the website for Friday, mild conditions. Otherwise, winds out of the south. That's going to help to get some a uh, little bit warmer conditions in here for a little bit anyway. Not seeing, again, a lot of very warm conditions uh, out there. If you're heading out on the golf course, jacket or a cardigan or something would be a good idea as we see those winds out of the south. But temperatures much warmer than what they have been over the last couple of days. This is information from the VIRS system, the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite. And this is a way for scientists, earth scientists, fire management officials to keep track of what's going on when it comes to brand new fires. The bright red dots are fires that have popped up within about the last, roughly speaking, 18 hours or so from our recording point here and a good portion of those have been across the east and especially the southeastern United States dozens upon dozens of them in Texas some in southern Louisiana and we've seen a few more in and around this area you notice again the dots are a little bit more numerous especially for that fire that was set around Lookout Mountain and then there's another one roughly over toward the Raccoon Mountain area. If you saw some of that tonight, check out our social, if you didn't see some of it, check out our social media pages as we saw some plumes of smoke coming in from roughly off of Raccoon Mountain. So uh, not good news all the way around. Looking at the potential for some more wildfires coming up into this weekend. So again, it's time to be very careful with anything involving fire out there. Now looking back on the Chattanooga camera, all the way back on Bailey's heating and air camera, Raccoon Mountain off into the distance and some nice plumes of smoke were hitting there just past about sunset. I'm hoping to get a time lapse ready to go so you can see a little bit more about what that looked like. Likewise from Lee Point uh, around the area of 153 traffic down here at the bottom of your screen beneath the banner. Lookout Mountain here and then all the way off into the distance that is where way past Lookout Mountain is where we saw those plumes of smoke popping up and that was just again about sunset there was another fire in lookout mountain georgia today uh, information on that on our website wdef.com for more I was even able to see a little bit of that plume of smoke between the struts of the bridges on the speedy's total car care camera camera center from the chattanooga theater center coolidge park the north shore tennessee river and back toward downtown chattanooga beautiful evening lots of people out and about wasn't quite as chilly as it was about 24 hours ago uh, conditions right now for travel in and around the area of tomahawk crane and rigging camera at 24 and 75 very much on the quiet side there and pointing our cameras from downtown on the patriot concrete camera north slope of lookout mountain and again some of that smoke was visible heading off to the north in the last uh, several hours there but decently clear and a beautiful if not somewhat brisk evening across 
uh, much of the mid, much of the uh, Tennessee River Valley. Temperatures have dropped into the lower 40s and going to continue to be on the chilly side into the rest of the, of the forecast for the next uh, several days. Air quality earlier was up in the 80s. Have to double check and see how much it was. Uh, earlier on this evening. Hopefully it has gone down by just a little bit. Let me see if I can uh, access that information real quick. It was at 82 as of about 5 o'clock, now down to 72. Apologies, I didn't have a chance to correct uh, this graphic on here. Temperatures in the 40s, a few 30s up into southeastern areas of Kentucky. Otherwise, again, uh, very quiet. 35 degrees, the cool spot right now on this map in Bristol, up around the Tennessee-Virginia line, and very much on the dry side, nothing in the way of precipitation uh, showing up any point in time. That also is not good news because as of right now, what we are looking for is a big problem where the drought situation is concerned. Again, we're showing a lot more drought out there from the U.S. Drought Monitor. This map gets updated every Thursday. And last week, this severe drought going to extreme sit drought situation, this was a lot smaller than what it used to be. Now it has expanded all the way back into the Mid-South and down into portions of northwestern Mississippi and all the way down into around middle Mississippi as well. So this is a very large increase in the drought situation here. So we continue again to monitor for the potential for more wildfires in the next couple of days. So keep it tuned to News 12 for more again on that and not seeing any real help out there. We do have a couple of systems to talk about affecting our weather. First one more directly, the high pressure area over the East Coast. That circulation around high pressure, keeping warmer air moving north, and that's why we have both the southerly winds and the temperatures have kind of started stair-stepping upwards into the last couple of days. Now looking farther back toward the area all the way back into around the Pacific Northwest, our area of high pressure here, keeping things decently quiet. It's what's going to be happening out west that's going to be determining a little bit more about what goes on with our weather here. This coming into the Pacific Northwest is an atmospheric river. It's a jet stream transporting a lot of moisture. This is what happened in California, the Cascades, the Sierras last winter that kept dumping feet of snow on top of feet of snow. And that's what helped to reduce a lot of the drought situation out west. Now this one is slamming into the Pacific Northwest, bringing in tons of rainfall and also some snow to the higher elevations. So this is going to hopefully curtail fire season a little bit in this area of the country, which is wonderful news to begin with. But here's the other thing that happens. This area going on through, fast-moving jet stream moving very quickly from west to east. This is called zonal flow going straight across very quickly. If it was non-zonal flow, if the if it was the opposite of zonal flow, you would start to see more of those wobbly bits of storm systems developing, dragging down cold air, pushing warm air up to the north. If you've ever seen an air dam in a supermarket when you walk through and that blast of air comes down, there are fans designed to push the air downwards that act like a dam, that that moving air keeps the rest of the air in the supermarket or the store, wherever you're going to. It basically stops the air on the inside. Moving air stops the other air. So instead of opening and closing the doors all the time and letting all the heat out, you spend a little bit of energy to block the air using air. So in this case, this is what's going to happen. This is going to go right across the U.S.-Canadian border for all intents and purposes. As it does, it's going to stop the really cold air from coming south. So that nice little burst of cold air that we've had over the last couple of days, that's going to stay up here. The very mild air on the south side of this river is going to stay down here. So any storm systems that make their way across the country are going to be pushed very quickly from west to east. And then it's also going to stop our temperatures from dropping downwards anymore. So it's going to be quite pleasant here. Numbers on the temperatures back well above normal. Not record-breaking, but again, you get the idea. It also, unfortunately, is going to stop any storm system really making its way from the Gulf of Alaska down our direction. Now, some of this latest storm system here might make its way our direction, possibly. But again, we're talking about some very iffy conditions for all of that to happen. Right now, it looks like the jet stream is going to determine a lot 
of what goes on in our forecast out there. All right, for tonight, frosty one in the morning, not quite as bad as it has been, but kids will need some protection against the chill at the bus stop and at the car rider line. High temperatures tomorrow, mid-60s. I think we should be looking at a beautiful sunny day coming up. Might even hit the upper 60s in some areas, especially northern parts of Georgia might see some fairly warm numbers. Upper 60s down around Atlanta and back toward Birmingham. Now, in a couple of days after that, the weekend coming up, chilly on Saturday morning, mostly clear skies. Back in the lower 70s, again, that's just above normal for this time of year. Yet Tomorrow, Friday, is going to be about as close to normal as we can possibly get. Then we get into around the lower 70s, lower 50s only. That's southerly wind keeping our temperatures up for Sunday morning, so not quite as chilly, but it will be cool. And then as we get toward about, I you know, went too far on the models there. Let's get back to there. Sunday afternoon, pleasant, dry, no problems at all being seen with uh, numbers back into the lower 70s. So doubtful we're going to be looking at too much of anything in the way of heat waves territory. But it looks like a nice spell of St. Luke's summer coming up. And temperatures very pleasant into the weekend. Notice also on Sunday, a few clouds, but that's about it. There's nothing out there in the way of anything involving rainfall. So when is our next best chance of anything involving rainfall coming our direction? The answer is not entirely surprising. Again, notice the black lines on the screen here. The isobar is showing that big dome of high pressure establishing itself. Now we look ahead as we go into and around next Tuesday. There is the possibility of getting some rainfall in here as part of that weak cross-continental system drops into the area. When that happens, we may see some sprinkles on Tuesday. Beyond that, outside of a sprinkle or two, it looks like the next best chance will be coming in Wednesday into and around Thursday. And that will be our pretty much best chance uh, for the next two weeks if everything. we What we need right now is a very big change in the atmosphere. We need the atmosphere to really, really change up a little bit, bring in some more moisture from off the coast of the Atlantic or off the Gulf. We need a leftover tropical system to head this direction. That's not happening. So right now, this system coming in, if this was coming in and escorting in some moisture off the Gulf, I'd be feeling a lot better about what this system has to offer. But right now, this system coming in from off of the land surface is going to bring in some moisture from maybe the Gulf, maybe the Great Lakes, but it's going to be a lot of the moisture that it transports with it across the country. And that means that continental air is going to be very much on the dry side. We need a maritime source to really stoke up the amount of moisture, and this is not going to be a lot if we get anything whatsoever. Again, about a week or so out, a lot can change between here and there. So by the time we get a little bit closer to this, say after the weekend, early next week, we'll have a better idea as to what might be coming our way. But for right now, the chances of rain, that's it, and that's all into the next several days. So we're just not looking at too much of anything out there for right now. Island Cove Marina and Resort, mainly clear skies, some haze and some smoke from those wildfires out around Raccoon Mountain and off of Lookout Mountain from earlier on. Temperatures into the rest of the forecast. Again, we will be back into the uh, mid-60s for tomorrow. Call it the upper 60s in some areas. Lower 70s for the weekend. Don't forget to change your clocks back one hour. Why we're still doing this, I have no idea. But in the meantime, don't forget to change back your smoke alarm batteries for some fresh ones and your weather radio batteries. Let's make certain that everybody is safe. We're approaching storm season number two, so changing your weather radio batteries would be a very good idea out there. Sunshine all the way on through the next couple of days. After that, Wednesday, a minor chance of some showers, and then we see the potential for, again, some more activity. 20, 30 percent coverage chance from what it looks like right now, again, this far out. But it looks like that's about our only chance of rain as to what we're seeing for uh, the time being. So we really don't have a lot of anything coming our direction. We're hoping to see more out of this uh, in the near future. But as of right now, it's just really not looking all that good. And defining, again, good would be a very good soaking of a couple of inches. As of today, we are seven inches plus behind normal for the year, September and October. Take a look at what we're behind today. 
that was about as much rain as we got for both September, the months of September and October, respectively, about a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, and that was it. And this is breaking records all the way back to, I believe, about uh, the 1890s, somewhere in there, especially for this area of the country. Uh, okay, from the National Weather Service in Morristown, right now from 1879 until today when records have been kept this is it was the eighth driest october on record and the second driest september october period on record so that's the number two driest of all time out there i believe the first driest one was in 1891 uh, if i'm not mistaken somewhere in there so uh, we need a lot of rainfall preferably not at one time but we do need a decent amount of rainfall to uh, help us out excuse me from where we are and we again are going to need that because of, of the fact that the wildfire threat is going to be continuing out there add to that uh, as we saw today there was a pretty good amount of smoke across the area and we're going to continue to see high pressure route some of that smoke depending on where it forms in the carolinas or off of georgia we're going to be seeing that possibility of that smoke coming up our direction and that's why it looked hazy today and that's why it kind of smelled a little bit more like a little bit better uh, closer wildfire out there so that's what we're going to be expecting relatively soon so again that is what we're going to be uh, watching for the course of the next couple of days please again use caution with anything involving fire or flame across the area it is going to be uh, very dangerous out across the area uh, for doing anything outdoors and that includes this again for the food city certified angus beef forecast uh, this temperature is going to be a little bit brisk by the time the sun goes down on friday not quite as chilly on saturday and then looking at a little bit very much on the mild side for sunday but here's the thing, anything, I mean anything involving fire or flame, the welding torch, the cigarette butt, the backyard barbecue pit, uh, lighting a couple of candles outside and then forgetting about them, any of those things could start a major wildfire. So this is going to be the weekend to really pay attention to what exactly you're doing with fire or flame out there go out grill have a good time please make certain that if you're going on to government property uh, city county state campground facility make certain that you can light a campfire if you can't there should be signs posted but double check there if you have a burn permit okay you got the legalities taken care of call your local fire department double check ask some questions and find out whether or not you should be burning anything because right now this would be kind of controlled fire situation but you still need to watch for anything like a stray leaf that might catch on fire and cause some problems as it blows away in the wind a minor spark in conditions like this can start a major wildfire and that could lead to property damage that could lead to loss of life in some cases so now is the time to be exceptionally careful with anything involving fire or flame across the entire area the special weather statement from earlier across most of georgia from peachtree city georgia national weather service that has been canceled the fire weather warning also was dropped for today but we may see the potential of more of that coming our way more issuances tomorrow so chip chapman will have more on that coming up again bright and early tomorrow morning want to know more about the weather and again keeping track of what's happening when severe weather hits and remember we're getting close to storm season number two so now is the time to get ready for that make certain you got your weather radio programmed we can help you do that wdef.com slash weather market calendars if you'd like to get your kids interested in astronomy weather permitting the barnard astronomical society will be holding their harrison bay star party at the state park recreation hall more information on their facebook page or at barnardastronomy.org that's the good news the bad news is that utc clarence t jones observatory was going to be holding their star party this weekend the 5th of november that has been canceled due to a fire at the observatory no one was hurt apparently damage was minimal there was a good smoky smell in there according to their uh, facebook and other posts 
But as of right now, there's going to wait for another week or so to start the star parties back up again. So for the 5th on Sunday, that star party at UTC Jones Observatory has been canceled. Updates again on their Facebook page and at utc.edu if you'd like to find out more about uh, what is going on there. I think that should do it for right now. Let's take a quick peek into what's going on for the Food City tailgate forecast for Friday night. It's going to be a very mild start, no question about that. Temperatures before the game, clear skies for the most part, mid-60s by about the time the sun goes down. Temperatures will drop off a little bit. And by the end of the game, if you're staying, take something with you to ward off the chill because it's going to be shirt sleeve weather when you go not so much when you finish up so please keep that in mind we'll have an update on your high school tailgate forecast coming up tomorrow on news 12 in the evenings so stay tuned again uh, for more on that in the mornings if you're going to be out scraping the car and you should be once again a couple of extra minutes would be a very good idea just to be on the safe side so for right now again a couple of extra minutes planning things out i've got an appointment i've got to be at in the morning uh, so we have to get up and get the car going for that. So for right now, again, a little bit of extra time. Scrape the entire windshield off. That periscope driving thing just makes me nervous. So please use caution on that as you go throughout the rest of your day. That should do it, I think, for Thursday night. And again, we'll have updates with Chip Chapman coming up bright and early on Friday morning. The end of the week is in sight. Want to drop us a line, go to WDEF.com. My email address is a onic austin just the first initial, last name, at WDEF.com if you'd like to know more. Uh, again, if you can check out our repeat performance of Weather Overtime, it's always available on our website, WDEF.com slash weather for more. Thanks for joining us for Thursday night. That should wrap it up for us here at News 12. We'll have more on News 12 at 11 and on Daybreak tomorrow, and we'll get you into the weekend safely on Friday. Again, thanks for joining us for Weather Overtime for Thursday, November 2nd.